I'm here in Buenos Aires uh, it, speaking with Laura Alonso, who is an alumna of the Draper Hill Summer Fellows Program, but has risen uh, in terms of her political responsibilities. Uh, we spoke in Lima a few months ago uh, prior to the election of President Macri. Uh, since then, you've switched from being a member of uh, Congress to uh, going into the executive, uh, working in the field of corruption. So let me just begin by talking about the general agenda that uh, is faced by this new government in terms of restoring good democratic practice. I mean, what would you say are the main priorities and the main challenges? Well, uh, of course, the rule of law is one of the main challenges because this government and the president has set the fight against poverty and the reunion of the country after this huge divide that we mm -hmm. have suffered in the past years as main goals. So when we speak about poverty and when we also speak about security issues in the country, we need to speak about the rule of law. President Macri has, uh, I think that he's leading a transition and it's a very deep one. It's a there is a political transition, the openness of the democratic system again, and freedom and freedom of speech and freedom for the media and for everyone to say whatever they want to say without any retaliation or mm -hmm. fear of being punished by mm -hmm. anyone or, or chased by the government. Mm -hmm. So this was one of the main, uh, it's one of the main indicators that usually people feel. Mm -hmm. That now you can say things and no one is going to chase you or mm -hmm to shout out at you on TV as mm -hmm. it used to be in the past. There are no long speeches, there are no speeches at all from the president, mm -hmm. no national chains on TV. It's absolutely, it, normality has come back in that, way, mm -hmm. in, in that sense. On the other hand, the judiciary seems to be active in the investigation of uh, past corruption cases, but even in present investigation. So for example, President Macri is under investigation, mm -hmm. judicial investigation uh, uh, related to uh, Panama Papers and his name appearing in an old offshore society mm -hmm. uh, 15 or uh, 18 years ago. So the the judiciary is operating freely mm -hmm. without any political interference and this is something that uh, is also said and claimed mm -hmm. by the own judges mm -hmm. who usually do not um, th they are really amazed that mm -hmm. no one is mm -hmm. phoning them mm -hmm. or pressing them to mm -hmm. do uh, anything or to take or make any decision mm -hmm. that can favor the government this government are can, and can go against the former government. It's right. just okay, you have to do your job. On the other hand, there is a lot of work trying to restore, uh, to restore uh, oversight bodies and administrative controls inside the administration and the president has been very strong with his message uh, towards all the ministers and the secretaries and everyone uh, regarding to corruption mm -hmm. and uh, that's why he has uh, openly said in Congress mm -hmm. for the National Assembly speech that uh, there is no place for corruption under his government mm -hmm. and that he's going to strengthen some institutions as the anti-corruption office, for example. Okay. Well, let's go on to the specific office that you're occupying, this anti-corruption office. So how do you see your challenge in, in making this a functional office? Because it's existed for some years. It has existed for 16 years now. It was created in 2000. And in the past 12 years, uh, the, the office has had serious problems, of course, and backwards. Even it has problems with human resources, with budgeting, and with a technology to do its job. It has uh, two missions, or one mission, but two, two tasks. One is the prevention of corruption and strengthening the integrity system in the country, and the other one is investigating matrices of corruption mm -hmm. and even cases mm -hmm. and going into the courts when uh, within 
the strategy, you decide that the, mm -hmm. the case is significant. Mm -hmm. Economically but you have to you have to refer the case to the courts. You don't have independent prosecutorial no. authority. No, you have to go to the courts, and this is the way it works almost everywhere. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, the anti-corruption office in this country uh, needs to be, from my point of view, redesigned. It mm -hmm. needs more independence. It needs more autonomy, and it needs to have its own budget mm -hmm. and a bigger budget. Mm -hmm. So what's uh, my my. Um, F you know, my first two years plan is mm -hmm. to restore, in a way, the budget, human resources, a building, mm -hmm. uh, technology. We need to give infrastructure to mm -hmm. an office that has been, of course, destroyed by mm -hmm. the former government. And we need to recreate it and to redesign many of the procedures mm -hmm. and processes inside the the office it, and it, then in the second mm -hmm. phase sorry we i hope that we can go for um for an architectural redesign mm -hmm. uh, like a new institutional design for the office more decentralized and autonomous from mm -hmm. the executive and i hope that at some point i can you know mm -hmm. do this normalizing job mm -hmm and give this office to mm -hmm. someone new in mm -hmm. three or four years. So I think uh, in order to keep the political momentum going, the Macri administration as, as a whole needs to s demonstrate some real successes yeah. in some areas, um, not just restricted to your office, but what do you hope for, like in a year? What, what, what do you think concretely the government could you know, accomplish that would demonstrate to people that it really made a difference that he became president? Well, the first thing that uh, must be something that everyone can feel is the control of inflation. Mm -hmm. And I think that if the, if the macroeconomic decisions that the president has made uh, finally uh, take to the right, mm -hmm. you know, to the right end, in one year, people will feel that the money that they have in their pockets is valuable. Mm -hmm. And that will create a better a better climate for for investment and the creation of private jobs mm -hmm. which is also something that the president wants really to uh, he he wants to deepen that because mm -hmm. the creation of jobs is not public employment mm -hmm. it's private jobs right. that's why he's also speaking a lot about entrepreneurship about access to credit for small and micro businesses mm -hmm. how to uh, how to build a new economy from the talent and the potential of each individual in the country mm -hmm. so in a way we have shifted from this idea of the people as a mass mm -hmm. towards this idea of the people as a collective uh, mass, not, not mass, it's a collective group of individuals that have talents and potential to create their own businesses mm -hmm. and to progress in life. Mm -hmm. So this idea of, um, you know, betting into mm -hmm. each person, mm -hmm. to invest in, in each person mm -hmm. with good quality education, which is one of mm -hmm. the other middle term or long term mm -hmm. goals of this administration with uh, access to technology mm -hmm. and even with access to information not mm -hmm. only inside this country but also overlooking other countries and this has yeah. also something that has changed a lot in the past five months mm -hmm. this idea that we that the world and uh, developed countries are not enemies of Argentina, mm -hmm. that we can be friends, mm -hmm. and in many cases we can be partners. So, mm -hmm. you know, reopening the dialogue with Washington or with London, for example, and we, we still have a conflict yeah. with London, has been very important to, mm -hmm. to, to show mm -hmm. that we can be part of the, of the world. And then how about, so this is a very polarized society. Uh, it's got class divisions that's reflected in its politics. Is there a strategy for trying to relieve that polarization by, you know, paying attention to social inclusion and you know social policy and the like? Yes, uh, that has been one of the main messages during the president campaign uh, regarding to the union of Argentinians mm -hmm. uh, and to respecting different opinions. Mm -hmm. So this idea of restoring democracy in this open way. Of 
from values and ethics for democracy. Mm -hmm. This idea that all the opinions matter and that they are all, every person is important and we have to pay respect for the different opinion mm -hmm. and to listen to that opinion. And I think that uh, he, he's trying. Uh, of course, the political arena is very difficult because mm -hmm. he is a minority in both houses. Mm -hmm. But when he speaks to the people, the words and the phrasing that he's using, uh, he's not divisive, divisive at all. Mm -hmm. I think that one of the main goals is to have a speech and to have an aligned government inviting those that think differently mm -hmm. to be on board. So if you watch or you you listen to the uh, public broadcasting mm -hmm. media system, you will find a completely different programming from the previous administration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even you have a lot of people that worked on the public TV and mm -hmm. public radio that were against uh, Macri, and they are still there. Mm -hmm. And they are very critical. And we think that this is something that we have to celebrate mm -hmm. and to respect, because there is a, there is a place for every voice. Mm -hmm. And this is something that people say, wow, this is, you know, the mm -hmm. president is not uh, threatening anyone on TV. Mm -hmm. He's not pointing out any person uh, mm -hmm. and this shows that at some point the past election sh was a message from society mm -hmm. saying we want something different even the other candidates mm -hmm. you know his challenger was also a different type of leader uh, comparing to Mrs. Kirchner mm -hmm. so the this idea of going back to democracy in mm -hmm. this open way of saying things and respecting each other. I think it's making life easier for a lot of people mm -hmm. from, you know, from the poor to the richest people in this country, mm -hmm. that they can really feel that they are free to say uh, without any retaliation. Right. Okay. Well, you've got a big challenge ahead of you, so I wish you luck. Uh, uh, I hope that Argentina, you know, continues to do well, and uh, uh, we'll see. Hopefully, we'll be back in Buenos Aires again and uh, uh, see what you've actually managed to accomplish. Thank you. And this is just, you know, we're just starting, mm -hmm. and it's not only an administration. We think that something new is coming because there is a new generation of politicians, a new generation of business people mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that maybe in the next two or four years there's going to, you know, we are setting um, the um, scenario for something that will be or can be something completely mm -hmm. different in the next maybe 10 years. Mm -hmm. So we are just starting. We are making the first investments and the people gave us the, the chance to do this investment for all society, mm -hmm. not only for a group or a part, but mm -hmm. for all Argentinians. Okay, good. Thank well, you. thanks very much, Laura. Thank you.